I'm pretty sure you've been in the situation where you've got yourself a external battery pack and you've used it to recharge your phone on the go and your phone has got a 3000 milliamp hour battery your battery pack is a 3000 milliamp hour battery pack and yet your phone doesn't reach full charge why is that well let me explain Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and today I want to look at the capacities of portable power banks, these external battery packs that you can use to charge your phone on the go. Now the thing about a battery pack is they come in all shapes and all sizes. There are big ones and small ones and round ones and square ones. And they all have a characteristic which is the capacity and that capacity is normally quoted in milliamp hours. And you might say, well I've got a phone, a Galaxy S7 for example, has got a 3000 milliamp hour battery, I'll get myself a 3000 milliamp hour portable battery pack and then if I want to I can recharge it. But actually then you find that when you do try to recharge it, it doesn't get to 100%, it doesn't get even near 100%. Now why is that? Well to look into this problem I've done two things. I bought myself a couple of battery packs of different sizes and I've tested to see how much charging they will actually do and to see how that charging number compares with this milliamp hour capacity number that's quoted on the battery. And then the second thing I've done is I've done some maths to try to work out what's really going on. So starting with the battery packs, I bought myself an Anker lipstick size uh, portable power bank. It's a 3,350 milliamp hour unit. I also got a small Samsung one. That's a 3,100 milliamp hour unit. And then I got a big one. This is the Amazon Basics uh, battery pack. And that's a 16,100 milliamp hour unit. Obviously you can see it's quite a different size to the other ones. And so I used them, I charged them all up fully, and then I had a whole bunch of depleted mobile phones, and I started to charge them up to see how things would go. Now starting with the Samsung, which I said has got a 3,100 milliamp hour capacity, when I tried to charge up a Galaxy S7 for that, it went from zero to 71%. Now that actually gives us a figure of 2,130 milliamps. So from a 3,100 milliamp hour battery, I managed to get 2,130 milliamps of charge out of it. Now the second battery that I tested was the Anker lipstick size one, and that's a 3,350 milliamp hour battery. And when I charged up a mobile phone with that, I managed to get 2,337 milliamp hours out of it. And then the third one, of course, I tested was this Amazon Basics with its 16,000 milliamp hour battery. Now that's pretty huge. So I had to charge up several phones, one after the other, to try to drain that battery. But I still didn't get 16,000 milliamp hours of uh, current out of it. What I actually did get was 12,380. So as you can see, all three chargers, whether they were small, whether they were from a big company like Samsung, whether they were a value pack one like the Amazon one, in whatever they were like, none of them reached their full capacity. So let's try to understand some maths to see why that is. Now, if you look closely on the label of these phones, you'll find two numbers. One is the capacity in milliamp hours, like I've already told you, and one is also something called watt hours. Now, watt hours are actually a much more reliable way of telling about the capacity of a power bank. Now, I'm sure that you remember that watts is calculated by multiplying volts by amps. Now, actually, when you look at the watt hour numbers on all of these devices, you can divide that by the capacity that's given and it will tell you how many volts the battery is on the inside of the power pack. And what you find is that power packs in general have a 3.7 volt battery inside of them. And that's quite good because most mobile phones, most smartphones have a 3.7 volt battery inside of them. However, there's two small problems. One is that we do all our charging via USB. And so there's a USB port on the battery pack and you connect that into your phone. Now USB runs at five volts. So the first thing that has to happen is, is that the battery pack has to convert that 3.7 volts into five volts. And to do that, the ampage has to go down. So already you're not running at the full amp capacity of that battery because there's been an up conversion to a different voltage level. And then what happens, it goes down the USB cable, it hits the phone, and then the phone will then probably downstep that to maybe 4.2 volts or 4.4 volts. 
So there are two conversions going on here. One an up, up step from 3.7 to 5 volts, and then in the phone from 5 volts down to 4.2 or 4.4 volts. Now what that means is two things. First of all, the capacity at 3.7 volts is not what is being used when it comes to charging the phone. So there's a difference there. And secondly, the up conversion and then the down conversion actually lose power because all conversions lose power. Otherwise we'd have uh, infinity machines that could just go on you know, forever and ever and we wouldn't have any problems. But energy gets lost and that's normally lost through heat. And you can feel that at the back of your phone when it's charging, there is some heat being dissipated. Now over at the AndroidAuthority.com website, I've got all the calculations on how you calculate the actual capacities with the voltages and the amps and the watts and all that kind of stuff. Go over to AndroidAuthority.com and look for this article. However, if you want to know my rule of thumb, this is what it is. A battery power bank will give out two thirds of what its milliamp hour capacity is. So that's really easy. If you have a Galaxy S7 with a 3000 milliamp hour battery, then what you want to do is multiply it by three, 9000, divide it by two, 4.5, 4500. So you want 4500 milliamp hour external battery pack to get one charge out of that phone. If you want two charges in that, then you're going to need a 9000 and so on and so on. And if you're being really lazy because you don't want to multiply by three and divide by two, then basically just get one twice as big as the battery in your phone and then you're pretty much guaranteed to get yourself a full charge. In fact, there'll even be a little bit left over. So that's really good news. So as a summary, the battery inside of the battery pack is 3.7 volt. That has to be an up conversion. There has to be a down conversion. The battery charges in your phone at around 4.4 or 4.7 volts. There's heat loss. And the combination of all those things together is that your battery packs only give out two thirds of what's written in the milliamp hour capacity. So buy one that's big enough to cope with the battery in your phone. My name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please tell me in the comments your experience of using external power banks. How good are they at charging your mobile phone on the go? Also, don't forget to download the Android Authority app so you get access to all of our news and features directly on your mobile phone. And last but not least, don't forget to go to AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.